Hi, and welcome to this ANSYS video module on how to set up a multi-action simulation using ANSYS HFSS. And this is the third in a series of videos following the previous modules, which introduced the topic of multi-action and as well as the fundamentals, the very specific requirements that need to exist in order for a device to experience the phenomenon of multi-action. Now there is a document that's titled the TOR 2014-02198 and that is intended to provide a standardized process for mitigation of multi-pactor break breakdown within a spacecraft components. And it is directed towards component designers, satellite system engineers, as well as the customer community. And it's to provide a worst case conditions, margin requirements, and verification of these requirements using state-of-the-art methodologies. In addition, it also recommends methods that are provided with examples to ensure that proper requirement verification for all satellite RF components that are susceptible to RF breakdown. And in the appendix, there is a KVD, a known breakdown device, and it's shown here. And so let's use this model to show you how to set up a multi-action simulation in HFSS. And there are so many different fundamentals or functionalities that are used in space-based systems and physically realized in many different geometry forms. And the one thing that they do have in common is they need to have some sort of input and output connections. And this KVD is actually a perfect example of a representative geometry of some coaxial connector. So let's go ahead and jump right into HFSS and see how to set up this KVD for a multi-action analysis. I'm using the ANSYS HFSS 2020 Release 2. And here's the digital twin of the model geometry in the HFSS application. And here's the outer connector sections that's representative of the coaxial connectors. And again, for input and output. And this section, there is some device under test, a dot. And in this dot, it's coaxial in design, but the interior section you see, it, it includes a parallel plate geometry, as well as a metal dielectric, as well as a dielectric dielectric boundary. So multi-paction would most probably occur in this gap here. So let's go ahead and simulate this device and let's use aluminum to represent the inner conductor and the outer shell as well. And of course, we can change these material, the conductor material or metal material. And we'll show you this in a later section in this module. And these connectors have some Teflon inserts. And the dot is a vacuum based model. And here's the dielectric dielectric interface. I know it's Teflon vacuum here some sort of vacuum. And this model is set up as a driven modal analysis, but any solution type can be used, driven modal or driven terminal. And here are the excitations, the ports we have set up for HFSS analysis. And this is where the energy comes into and out of the HFSS model. And for multi action we need to add a space charge region, some area where we're interested in where the electrons are, where the free electrons are. And this could be in a volume or on a surface, but not a mix. So go ahead and select that vacuum object, which is called region, right mouse click, select assign excitation, multi-paction charge region. And we get a pop-up box and it's named multi-paction charge region. And it has some default values such as the name multi-paction charge region one. Of course, we can change it to something more explicit. And then we have the number of particles that the default is 4,000. Sounds reasonable. We can also change that as well. And we can add more particles that, and when we do that, it will reduce the statistical variations, but it will also increase simulation time. But 4,000 is good. And we'll also keep all the other default values, the particle mass, the fault of the rest mass of an electron, and it's at rest, so the velocity x, y, z is zero. Select OK, close the box, 
And then in the project manager window, under excitations, and where the ports are located, you see that there's this space charge region, multi action charge region one again. And now that we set up where the charges are, let's set up the material boundary conditions. The surface is where the electrons bounce on or from, where it's reflected from. So let me select where the electrons are traveling. So I can simply select all the metal surfaces that are touching the inside surface of the outer conductor housing. Let me right mouse click and assign boundary, multi action C, S-E-E, -E, a dialog box appears and it's called multi action C. And this is very important for the multi action analysis. The curves, the S-E-Y curves that detail the material values. And this influences whether or not the impact energy will cause an avalanche effect. Again, these input parameters control whether the surface will excite more than one electrons or not. And if you have curves data for the SEY curves, you have the option to import that in as a data set. And what's crucial here is that alpha max value. That's the impact ratio on how much energy is needed. The Y max value of the SEY curve. And it's always best to have this curve match measured data. As we said before, the metal processing plays a factor here. And the default looks to be copper because it's 2.25, but I want to use aluminum. So let me just change that alpha max value to 2.98. And for now, I'll keep all the other default values. Now, the other values we need to describe, the SEY curves are alpha zero, the SEY value when there's no particles, the start of the curve, E zero, the initial impact energy, the amount of electrons at the start of the curve, E1, the energy where the SEY curves equals one on the lower end, and then E2, the energy where the SEY curves again equals one on the high side. And EM is the energy at Y max. And we can keep the default the same as SEE1, or we can again change that to a, a explicit name. The dielectric surface is unchecked as it's a boundary conditions between a vacuum and a, a metal. And now we could do the same for the outside surface of the inner conductor. And again, keeping the default name SEEE2. Let's now select the surface area of the dot that touches the cross section of the connector. Again, the conductor is aluminum, so I'll change the alpha max. And this time I'll check the radio button for the dielectric surface. Very nice feature as the surface is Teflon vacuum, two different dielectrics. A metal dielectric to dielectric and not just a fixed metal dielectric surface as in most other tools. And in this case, the dielectric dielectric surface, so there can be a secondary charge buildup on that surface. And I may want to include that. First pass, you probably won't need to do this if you're just looking for a trend. And with respect to single dielectric surfaces, multi pactor dielectric charge buildup is less frequent and is typically associated with the presence of multiple dielectrics. This has a peculiarity that the dielectric surface actually gains electric charge when the electrons are released. So it's generating a DC field which pulls the electrons back to the emission surface. And in the case that there's an RF field and it's parallel to the surface, such as in the a dielectric window, the RF electric field accelerates the electrons parallel to that surface. And while the DC field attracts the electrons to it. So as a result of this, the electrons impact the surface of that high speed and high angle of incidence, thus releasing extra electrons. And this fact, together with the poor thermal dissipation of the dielectrics compared with the metals, makes multi action phenomenon be more potentially dangerous and destructive in dielectrics rather than as compared to metals. multi action can take place in many different kinds of surfaces, including the metal dielectric, as well as metal dielectric dielectric. And of course, one has to be a vacuum. This completes the excitation and the boundary conditions setup that are necessary for the multi action simulation in HFSS. In the next video, I'm going to set up the analysis and look at the results. If you find this video helpful, please like it, comment on it, and subscribe to our channel. To find more information about multi action 
or other topics and more how-to videos, visit ansys.com forward slash courses today. Thank you.